Yeah. Just curious. So just kind of a, a heads up for Dale's folks, because you know, obviously. Okay. Uh, Melissa. Melissa Ralston, finance officer, and I'm <coughs> Everyone hear us? Okay. You all hear us? Okay. As a side comment, I was down in Riverside visiting uh, part of my family uh, last week and I happened to turn the TV on and look at the Riverside City Council and that, that's a city with a population of well over 400,000. Believe it or not, we have more people sitting in this audience tonight than they had in, in, in their city. And uh, my hat's off to you, uh, people in the audience. Coming and, and participating in our, in our government and our, in our local activities. Thank you for, for, for being here. Next, Mary. I'm Mary Kelly, Director of the Ministry of Services, and I have nothing to report to you. Jerry? I'm the here, the city engineer, and I have nothing to report either. How about any questions? <laughs> got to have some questions for Gary. Just want the. Uh, why don't you comment on the letter that's going to the Department of, of Public Health that, that uh, we put together and we signed off on? Uh, it's yeah, kind so of a significant yeah, document. We discussed the last council meeting. It is a letter requesting that they resend the citation of the city of Sunnyvale for the water treatment. Provide all the back of the interview request for our meeting. With a multi-page document, probably what, 25, 30 pages to it. Uh, question, uh, status of uh, ARRA uh, reimbursements to the city. The last time you mentioned that you sent off some uh, requisitions and they, uh, they couldn't did. find them and then they did find them. Yes. Uh, earlier this week, I received an email and Mary got a copy of it all, so they approved the first two payment requests, so the city should be seeing about $1.2 million shortly, whatever they're trying to shorten it, probably a couple of weeks. And they have a third invoice that they haven't processed yet, so it should start flowing now. Is that for work actually done or in anticipation, it is, partially, both or what? It's for work actually done on the plant, plus it's recapturing funds the city's Extended all the way back to uh, 2007. I go back in three years of the process. <coughs> Any other questions? Okay, uh, that will then. Uh, Any other staff? I think that completes our staff updates. Uh, let's start off with council updates, and we'll start on the left tonight uh, with Rick Down. Thank you, Mayor. Um, uh, since our last meeting, I've been out of town, and I want to thank uh, Councilman Bodie for filling in at the infrastructure meeting, and that's all that. Jack? Uh, I attended the last meeting last Monday night, I believe it was, 22nd, something like that. And LAFCO now is completely under the financial umbrella of the city, everything that completely out of the county. We all go through the city finance department. We're going to go to We even got some checks from them this week. Yeah, this week, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. And uh, there really wasn't a heck of a lot on the agenda. Mr. Thomas was there. The mayor was there. And uh, it was a good meeting. And we had a personnel finance meeting yesterday. Uh, some things happened there, but Councilman Tucker is going to tell you about that. That's all I have there. Right. All right. Uh, first of all, I attended the uh, UPA, uh, I guess I'll call it a regional coordination meeting. I mentioned it at the last council meeting. We had members from UPA, UPUD, the Murphy Sanitary, CCWD, to talk about regional coordination. Um, not to be confused with regionalization, regional coordination. Um, so there was some interesting comments that took place. Um, 
still doing some, you know, feeling out how this whole process is going to go. Uh, but uh, Janice Dooley from CCWD was kind enough to put it together. And if we can keep emotions and tempers out of the whole mix and, and work together, I think there's some things that we can come out that can come out of that. Um, as Jack mentioned, we talked. We had a personnel finance committee. They covered a lot of things. Some of them were more housekeeping events. Um, one of the things I want to bring to uh, council's attention, the uh, purchasing policies and procedures. I sent a memo out to everybody looking for some responses. We need to update that, so if you can get back to me as quickly as you can. We're talking about updating how we, uh, how we have money, some checks flowing through the city and, and updating that whole process. So uh, we also talked about engineering expenses. Um, it's a huge, huge portion of, of uh, our budget. Um, we've got several council members who have questions and have asked the personnel finance to kind of fine tune that. We've got it to a point that we think we've got a pretty good product. But what I'm going to recommend, and, and it kind of ties in with the next thing, is that we're going to have a little workshop about that, um, that we could all kind of digest what we've come up with at this point and see if we need to refine and get more details on the. Uh, on the accounting part of that. Um, it was discussed that we uh, should put on a preliminary budget uh, discussion. We talked about the last council meeting. Um, I'd ask the council to take a look at the calendars for March 11th. Um, we'll do it here in this, in this facility if we can get everybody in staff. And we're going to be talking about is not necessarily numbers, but we're talking about what some expectations are as we move into the budget, some procedures, some things we maybe didn't consider last year, we need to consider this year. So um, please get with Mary and let her know if that date's going to work. What time? Nine o'clock is the number, the date, the time we had. So the first half will be talking about, 11. first half will be talking about some engineering expenses and what, what detail we want. The second part will be a kind of a staff council workshop on getting things started. Um, and I guess the last thing, we met as a uh, selection committee this morning to talk about the city administrator uh, applications that we had. Um, it, it is of the opinion of this committee that we extend the um, uh, advertisement uh, one more month. So unless the council has a, an issue with that, uh, we're going to, we'd like to extend that one more month. Um, not that we don't have some candidates that are worthy of consideration, but we want to make sure that we're doing due diligence and have a, a pool of candidates to choose from. So, Mary, I'll get with you and we'll talk about that unless the council has an issue about uh, moving that forward. How about any changes in the advertising or notices? <laughs> we talked about that and we talked, we, we, we felt that what we have is a good product. Um, we talked about, you know, the local papers, the <coughs> radius is not large enough. We talked about how when you do a Google search, because we're online with this, Google, ser Google searches will pick up <coughs> that type of thing. So in terms of internet um, searching, um, we couldn't find any jobs like this on like monster, monster jobs or career builder. Uh, we didn't feel that going to a Modesto B or, or other those, those kind of papers would be, uh, would bring, bear any fruit. Uh, because most people do it by the internet search anyway, so we felt that this was a was was a still the, the, the appropriate way to go, um, and we were unanimous in that. So how about any of you see you're on it in uh, the two of you, mm -hmm. and uh, also Gary, Gary and uh, Roger Newman. Roger Newman. Okay. Yes. How do you feel standing it? Yes, I'm I'm in favor of that. It's okay. That's all I have. And the, I think the finish date was something like the middle of March. March 13th, 12th. 12th. And this one, so, uh, so, so we'll, we'll get with Mary and we'll extend it out. Um, to some, somewhere around the 10th or 12th. Or, okay. Yeah. Anything else, Craig? I got a lot of stuff, but you don't want to hear it all. No, that's it. Now what that means. Elaine? <laughs> I attended the UPA meeting along with Craig in place of the mayor who was not able to attend. And I also attended the safety services uh, committee meeting yesterday 
and we discussed the emergency plan that the uh, citizen had brought up at one of our other uh, uh, council meetings in, in February. And staff said uh, that the emergency plan is being updated and that they will be coordinating with the Red Cross and other agencies that can assist in emergency situations such as power outages that are you know, long duration and uh, con contact information that will be included in the plan will be Red Cross, PG&E, your local fire and, and the police department and the emergency numbers uh, be posted in the post office. That's it. Okay. Uh, <coughs> Jack Bodie and I, I had attended the LAFCO meeting together, and uh, things are relatively quiet, I'd say, at LAFCO right now. Um, the also attended uh, with Jack, he sat in for uh, Rick Downey at the infrastructure meeting, and uh, one of the most, well, we had a lot of items uh, on, on the agenda. Uh, one of the important items, though, is uh, we need input from uh, staff, and uh, council members and planning commission on the traffic mitigation uh, project. And I think you've got a, a date of, I think, about this tomorrow. week, tomorrow, tomorrow, March 3rd. And uh, the, the, the plan then would be to, to bring those comments that uh, David gets uh, to the next infrastructure meeting for final review, and then we'll pass those on. Uh, back up to, uh, well, I, I think a lot of them will have to do with ourselves within our city in terms of designating certain streets uh, uh, for future planning purposes. But very important to, to make your comments. Uh, I have nothing else on, on uh, council updates. Uh, we'll now open it up at uh, 620 uh, to public comment. We'd like to have uh, public uh, comments uh, on items not on the agenda. And if possible, we'd like to have you limit your comments to three minutes. But uh, we go beyond that if, if required. Any public comments, please? Well, I'm, I'm amazed. All those. Okay. With that, if we have none, we'll close that and we'll move on to uh, a consent agenda. These items are considered to be routine, uh, acted upon by the council at one time without discussion. Uh, any council member, staff, or public uh, member may request items on the consent item to be removed uh, to the regular agenda for discussion. Uh, any, any special requests? Uh, Okay, we have two items ahead in front of us. We have the minutes of the regular meeting of February 16th, 2010, and we have a second item on motion to pay the bills. I move we accept to uh, uh, accept the consent agenda A and B. Second. Okay, it's been moved by Turco and seconded by Morris. I'd like to call for a vote. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, abstain, carry. Now move on to our regular agenda. First item on the regular agenda is a big deal for City of Angels and the branding group. And the title of this item is Brand Identity Final Approval. And uh, ask Ann Forrest, and I have, her, I, well now I see Ann, to the uh, brand leadership team to uh, speak. There's three items involved. Uh, Item A is approve the brand and identity standards manual, which we had a workshop on. And then approve B, which approve the brand leadership team as brand identity manager. And C is approve recommended city stationary and branding implementation date of, see, you picked April 1st. Okay, and thank you. <clears throat> we had a workshop two weeks ago prior to the uh, last city council meeting uh, where we uh, presented the, um, brand, the final bits of the brand and identity standards manual 
um, is, is, is just uh, laying out the ways that um, the brand will be used. The brand has already been approved. This was just the, uh, the, the document that tells people who want to use the brand, the mascot, the logo, the tagline, or any of that, how, how they can use it. Uh, so that's the first item on the agenda for approval. Within that was a uh, set of instructions on how you would go about if you wanted to use the, the brand in, in your advertising or um, posters or anything like that. And uh, within that, uh, we had recommended that uh, the brand leadership team be designated as the brand identity manager. The final approval for usage would come from the city, but it would be uh, any application for usage would come to us first so we could review it against the uh, standards manual. And the third item is um, within the standards manual is a layout for new city stationary using the brand um, and um, and so we would suggest and the city feels that the administration feels that they can get because it's done digitally that we can begin implementing that the a month from now, April first. And I'll be happy to take any questions. Yeah. And could you mainly tell people in the audience but Remind me to what exactly is going to happen on the approval date of April 1? What are you going to do? What's going to happen? Well, the city would start to use its new stationery, which um, we don't have it. I'm sure it's on the computers, but we don't have it set up but for the benefit of the public. <coughs> it's simply using the new logo, on which is the Angels Camp logo on the stationery and on the envelopes. And it's all done digitally, so that means that the, all the different departments would have this put, you know, go on their computer, and instead of using the old stationery, which was originally that, they would begin using one that looks like this, which is very hard to see, I know. Well, that's a, that's a little bit different because the, um, that's not the city logo, but this is the business association has already begun to use the new um, identity, and uh, that's out on their materials now. So that's that's basically what we're talking about. But it's something going to happen to the website? Oh uh, well, yes. Sometime within the next week or so, we will launch the. There are other things that will happen once you approve this. One is that uh, it'll take about two weeks for the. Um, designer who put this all together to finalize everything so that you, this will then be available in DISC, it'll be available on the city's website, uh, it'll be available in book form as well. Uh, <clears throat> Andrew, should you use the microphone to make sure oh, that it gets onto yes. the uh, the video yeah. so that the, so people yeah. not here could okay. also hear the sound all right. All right. Thank um, you. To answer the question <coughs> and what happens with the, upon approval, the council's approval, uh, the the designer who has put all this together will need about two weeks to finalize this booklet, put it on disk, and then put it in a PDF form that will be available on the city website so that anyone can pull it off. Uh, not only does it come this way, but just a little technical, there will be each individual element will be as a separate element on the website. So if someone wants to use the identity, the, the logo, they can pull that off and use it. And they can manipulate it in terms of size and everything. So that takes a little bit of time. Uh, within the next couple of weeks, the uh, city's website, the marketing website, which talks about all the various activities and things, will be um, go live. Uh, that's just about to be finalized. But again, we can't finalize anything till we get uh, your approval. Um, and then we will be, go out to the public and do some workshops telling them how they can use the logo and the ways they can use it. Um, and, uh, and then the city's stationery will go live as well. And then we will also start some of the marketing materials for the city because we haven't been able to use this yet. Okay. Any questions here? Oh, Jack, you have another question? Uh, one more. Okay. Yes. Isn't there going to be a, a big... Mascot naming contest. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, there is. Thank you. <laughs> um, 
we will, within the next, well, actually at the next city council meeting on the 16th, we will launch a mascot naming contest to get uh, solicitations from uh, the citizens as well as uh, people in the county, uh, any, well, anywhere, um, to, as to the name of the mascot, the frog mascot, which is, um, let's see if I can find you, but I think most people have seen him. And, um, whoops, for the benefit of the TV and that. And uh, we have a group of uh, people putting the rules together. There'll be a nice basket of um, opportunities to use a uh, number of the sporting activities around Angel's Camp, as well as a basket of other items for the winter. And uh, in about four weeks after that, the winner will be named. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. And um, the uh, the logo and everything, and the, the brand, I mean, it looks great and everything else, but w w just explain to me why we have to have the city stationary, because it's, it's a city of angels and the angels camp, and reading the DDI stuff and, and the materials, it's a PR, the, the, the brand is a PR, it's not an advertisement, but, but public relations. And the city doesn't necessarily engage in public relations, it's, it's the businesses and the, the periphery of the city. Why, why is it necessary to do that? And the reason I ask is I made some phone calls to other people that have had the DDI, and they, they're not as far along as what, what you folks have done in terms of a lot of the things. Some of them have implemented it, but they don't do the stationary. They say, no, that's, we let the businesses and the PR side of things take care of it. So I just kind of, I just, just want some explanation as to why, why it's necessary to do both. Okay, uh, well, s to step back, a brand is uh, not just public relations or advertising. A brand is the image that forms in somebody's mind when they think of a thing, a person, um, a city, an area, whatever. Uh, and so the decision way back uh, in this was because we are a small area, everything we do here uh, will reflect on the brand. And uh, so it, we, it was felt that it was very important for the City of Angels to also carry this, the, the, the brand on its stationery and on its materials. Uh, that doesn't mean that it's a marketing exercise, but it just means that, that we'll all look the same. And we have so, as a small town, we really have so uh, few opportunities to present the town publicly. So it's very important that the the city look, this, you know, develop that personality that we wish to have, which is more of a rugged, clean, modern uh, look to it, as as opposed to just this frog that came off of a uh, clip art a few years ago. Because when I asked this, in a, a the city of the manager of Sherlock is one of the folks that that commented about it that has gone to this extent. And he said that a lot of people didn't want that on the, the logo because it, it changed the city, the official, I'm not saying it's right or wrong, I'm just making mm -hmm. that comment. Well, we've got, yeah. yeah, we've got folks that, you know, like the whole city of angels versus angels camp. Um, and, and we know that, you know, that's, it's got to be a bigger mm -hmm. volume because mm -hmm. there's a lot of folks that don't recognize it. So that's why I was asking that. And I was a little surprised when he said, no, we don't, we don't do that. Well, I think that a lot of it depends. If you had a larger area and you're doing it as a branding, as a destination, um, then you might look at things a little bit differently. But one of the one, and also, if you were a city that maybe had an amazing scroll or a shield or a crest or something that you've had for 200 years, then uh, that would stay. Perhaps if the recommendation would have been to to keep that that crest or that whatever it is that you've had. But the City of Angels really had no corporate identity to it or no city identity. You have, uh, if you look at the, the business cards that are done, that has, I mean, those have all, it's all been put together sort of on the back of a napkin in terms of having a bit of the city showing. And then you've got stuff that goes out that has just a, a clip art frog. And there's just nothing that, that uh, has really been able to solidify what the city looks like. And that's why this has come in this way. 
I have some concerns with the cost that would be um, to the city for changing their letterheads and all the envelopes. And I would think business cards would have to wait until our budget is coming up. And uh, the way the economy is, I, I'm not too sure about um, the city needing to change their letterheads by April 1st, I don't know how that would even be done. And uh, there are some other costs that would probably come into play that we haven't seen yet. And, uh, but I think anything that would have any sort of a cost should wait until we do our budget. Can I respond to that? Or, yeah. yeah. Um, well, first of all, Elaine, the city doesn't print stationery. It, it uses a digital um, template and then writes its letters and then prints out as they print each letter. So, they're, so that's easy to change. They get a new template, they put it on their computers, and they use it. The second recommendation uh, that we talked about at the workshop was that, um, and this is very common with any organization that changes, its, its corporate identity. Um, if they don't have the money to change everything at once, they do it on a gradual basis. So our recommendation is they use their supply of envelopes and then when they reprint, which they would have to do this year, this fiscal year, then they reprint with the new corporate identity. Um, and the same thing would be with business cards. As people need new business cards, so they'll probably be four to six months of sort of a pig's breakfast in terms of people will have, you know, some, you, you might go to a, four of you go to a meeting and some of you will have new business cards and some of you will have old ones because you simply haven't run out yet. But our recommendation is that you uh, not just cut everything off and print everything new. That's, that's too expensive. So it's just basically replenishment as we go along. But well, we don't have any costs okay. associated. I think that, Melissa might, you know, yeah, you know. What was that? I said I think Melissa was, was at least looking at, it would be the same cost of printing envelopes as you always print envelopes. No? No. no. Okay. Yeah, our current envelopes are just black, City of Angels plain, and then there would be, there would be an additional cost for the um, colors in the envelopes. The other thing with business cards, I talked to um, Foothill Printing today, and our business cards are such that they can mass produce them, so they have them on stock and have masters, so that when we add people, they just have to change certain spots. With these new um, business cards, the layout is different, so they would not be able to produce a master and run them, so they would be much more expensive than they are now. We don't have a cost because I could not get them the working models of the logo for them to produce it. <laughs> Anything else? How about public comment? Public questions for Ann or anyone else on her on her uh, branding team. I know we like the shop logo. Could you introduce yourself? Oh, I'm sorry. My name is Michelle Lee. Um, 6035 4B Ranch Road. Um, I know we like to shop local. We, try, we shop local in our everyday lives. I don't leave town. But printing these days is very, very expensive. Now, we would love to have our own business, would love to, our new Maloney storage business, would love to have the business to go to Foothill Printing because they're renters of ours and they need to pay their rent to us. However, you can get business cards online at, say, gotprint.com for $500 for $19. And it's very inexpensive. If you think you could possibly switch during this downtime to cut the cost and then move back to Foothill when there's more money in the coffers, then that might be something to think about. I'm Melanie Lewis. I'm a member of the branding committee. And um, I just was, what you were saying about the, the business cards not being able to change the names on them, I would think that's something we can, we can 
fix and make it so that it is a, a master plan. That's probably just an oversight of the designer. But there's no reason we can't get those made so that one car will work for everybody and you can just change the name. And I also want to make sure, Mary, when you were asking about the, the printing. Yes. Oh, the, what's the question? Yes. <laughs> 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 couldn't see, but I could hear. The, um, the printing of the of the pages when you guys print out your logo, this is on your computer. That's our utility bill. Okay, but this is in your computer, and you just print it as you need it. Your logo. That's correct. And it would be the same. You know, mm -hmm. that part would be the same. I just want to make sure that, that was understood. Right, the utility bill, but the envelopes would not be the same. Okay, you don't print the envelopes. So I mean, maybe that's something we need to look at making the envelopes black and white. Format. That's easy, you know, it's easily to work together. But, you know, I agree with Anne. This is a clip art. It comes on a little CD. Angel's Camp doesn't own it. It would be nice if we had something that was uniquely ours. And that's kind of what we're trying to do is make people realize, you know, that frog is Angel's Camp. So this, you know, this has been used at the high school. It's been used a lot of different places. It's not just Angel's Camp. So. Okay. All the public comments. Questions? If not, we'll bring it back up here. And uh, the item on our agenda is to approve items A, B, and C. And uh, I'd like to have a motion. Can Mr. Mayor make a motion that we approve the brand identity for item A, B, and C, which is uh, all the stuff we just talked about? Is there a second? I'll second that. Okay, it's been moved by uh, voting and seconded by uh, 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 Rick Downey. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, in, in, uh, if, if there's no further discussion, yeah. Um, if if you keep if you separate them, then I can vote. Okay. Otherwise, I'll have to. Well, so we'll do one at a time. Yeah. Okay. okay. Right. I'll amend the motion to approve item A, which is approved brand and identity of standard brand. I'll second that. Okay. It's been moved and seconded. Moved by uh, voting and seconded by Downey on item number A, which is approving the brand and identity of standard brand. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Carries 5 0. Item number B, make the, I'll make the motion for that. I'll uh, second that motion. Okay, the motion has been made by uh, voting and seconded by Downey to uh, approve brand leadership team as brand identity manager. A call for a vote. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? It carries 5 0. Item number C, I'll be right on. Uh, is there a second? I'll second, sir. Okay. Item number C uh, has been, uh, a motion has been made by voting and seconded by uh, Downey to approve <coughs> the recommended city stationery and branding implementation date of April 1st, 2010. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? No. No. Abstain? That carries 3 2 0. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Anne. Thank you very much for your support. And if I may say that uh, I, I had not heard this from Melissa in terms of the printing, because we do have black and white usage, and, if, and it's not major that there be color on the envelope, so we can work together to make sure we get the most cost effective way. Item number two on our agenda is uh, has to do with the dedication of Garage House, and we have received the recommendations uh, from the Angels Camp Museum Commission and the Museum Foundation, and uh, we're looking for council action on this. And Bob Petty Home is going to introduce this item to us. Bob serves as chair of the Museum Commission. <coughs> Thank you, Bob. Well, I'm here tonight in response to the letter you referred to 
that you received from uh, Casey Stenler requesting the dedication of the Museum Carriage House to his grandmother, Emily Stenler, and your request, your request for input from the uh, Commission. The Museum Commission, the Museum Foundation, the employees and volunteers of the Angels Camp Museum, many of the citizens of Angels Camp formally request that the City Council dedicate the Museum Carriage House to Emily Stenler for her over 27 years of service to the museum, her passion for preserving the historical legacy of Angels Camp, and most important for sharing her knowledge and love of Angels Camp in the name of public service. The dedication events, Emily Stemmer Day, at the museum will be held on the yet to determine date in April. We recommend a granite dedication plaque which would cost not more than $800, an additional $500 for invitations, decorations, refreshments, and so forth, be provided by the city for Emily Stemmer Day dedication of the museum. Questions for Bob? What's going to happen on this dedication day? Emily can be there. She's well enough to move there. Well, we hope so. So, Bob, you're asking, I mean, there's the agenda reads for the dedication, and then now you've kind of thrown in some other things to it. So, we're, we're hearing this all as one. Yeah, that's sure the money again. Yeah, I, I just it doesn't it doesn't refer to the money aspect. Uh, so. This is the money has to come from somewhere. Well, no, it just it just talks about accepting the the mm -hmm. Emily as you know uh, us recognizing that. So. The technicality would be on our on our uh, agenda for tonight. I don't know whether you've seen it. Is approving the request uh, from the museum commission and foundation to dedicate naming the carriage house at Angels Camp Museum in honor of Emily Stemmler. And uh, that's what we're going to decide tonight. With respect to plaque and invitations and expenses, that's a, uh, we got to take that as another, as another okay. item. Yeah. We and may have to delay it till May we can. We're, we're not able to act on that part tonight. We've got your letter. And we've got the letter from the uh, in front of us, the uh, Museum Foundation. I don't want to stem the enthusiasm, no. it's just it's not, it's not what, it, what we have in front of us. That's why. Okay, any other questions to Bob? How about public comments? Uh, if there's none, uh, I'd like to uh, bring it back up here and, and I'd ask for a motion to. Uh, May I ask question first? Yes. yes. Bob, could you possibly, if it's all right with the rest of the council, could you possibly give us some kind of a written request for the amount of money you're talking about and what's going to happen and, and that kind of stuff? Could you Very possibly happy. do that? Yes. Yes. Can I have a motion to do that? Yeah. I move that we approve the request from the Angels Camp Museum Commission and Foundation to dedicate naming the carriage house at the Angels Camp Museum. In honor of Emily Stimler. Second half. Okay, it's been moved by Turco and, and the seconded by voting uh, to approve the request for the naming of the uh, uh, carriage house in honor of Emily Stimler. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, abstain, that carries 5 0. Thank you, Bob. Thank you, and we'll get the right to work on that. I bet you will. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thanks a lot. Request is in the mail, right? Right. <laughs> and, and Mary, and Mary, would you please uh, arrange a, a, a letter to go to uh, the requester, the grandson? Telling him of that. This is the first time, as a side note, that I've seen. Uh, Stationary from the museum and the foundation, uh, and, and in light of our branding, it's going to be probably a topic of the conversation. But the, the, the headings, the, the stationary is quite attractive. Both the, both the organizations have developed. And, and for the benefit of the public, these are both new, new organizations uh, uh, within the past three years. Uh, uh, 
and, and uh, the, the foundation, for example, has a status of a 501c3. They're meant to be a fundraising group, and uh, it, it's, it's impressive the progress that they made uh, on the museum in terms of the, the public, the public uh, members and the volunteers that serve it. Moving now to item number three, uh, this is a pavement management system proposal, uh, and uh, we'll ask Gary Geo to speak about it. Yes, you have in your packet a proposal from Bob Weitzel to update the city's pavement management system. Uh, as the council probably recalls, the city accepted the streets and green home station of the city maintained system a few months ago. And in order to get grants from Caltrans, the city is required to have an updated pavement management system. So I contacted Bob and asked him to provide a proposal to the city. Bob is the person who has done all of the past pavement management systems. So. Questions for Gary on on, uh, on the pavement management proposal from Mr. Leitzel. Uh, Gary, read through the information. I mean, he's done this since I guess 2002, or maybe 1996. Uh, so obviously, he's the, the person that we like to go to. But uh, in, in light of the bid procedures, did this block the bid? Did this block the bid? Or did it? No, you're. Uh, purchasing ordinance doesn't require multiple bids for anything less than 125,000. It's stated that one, one can be brought to the council and the council sign if they can be Okay, so I'm going to Any other questions? I, I'd, like to have, I'd like to make a comment. Uh, Lysol has uh, done a, an excellent job. It was under sponsorship. Uh, and, and he kept in every every single street, every single width, length, uh, et cetera, uh, and and having uh, uh, compatibility with with the 99, 90 percent of the rest of the city, I think, is a would be a factor to consider. And uh, if if we had a, a an active, if we had a, a city administrator, just to address your your question. If we had a city administrator, his authority would be fifteen thousand dollars. I understand that. Uh, yeah. Okay. Well, we've had less. We've had less bid, less money right. than we put out for bid. Right. So right. we're not consistent. Right. Period. And, 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 yes. and that was a discussion. We had two items come before the personnel finance committee yesterday that we put the items back because we didn't follow the bid process, okay. and they were less than this. So okay. uh, the hundred twenty-five thousand doesn't. Fit this, yeah, but right. um, if this is something that you've already agreed to, I think it just needs to be said that we are not following consistently the procedures we set forth. So uh, that's why I asked the question. I'm not. I'm certainly not suggesting that this engineering firm is not the most capable and probably yeah. not the best. That's not. The pro that's not. That's not why we put the process in place. But right. didn't we approve that 125,000? This council, this very council, because well, he wasn't there. <coughs> That's an option. Yeah. It's an option. Uh, you work it. There's a five thousand dollars, five thousand dollars limit limit to the uh, city engineer, fifteen thousand to the city administrator. So, I, I don't want to muddy this discussion, yeah. but if we're going to be consistent, let's be consistent. That, that's, that was the point I'm trying to make. Okay. Uh, Public comments. On two public comments. Um, one is that the uh, John Titchener, 1311 Main Street, excuse me. Um, uh, number one, um, I recall a number of uh, uh, city council discussions debating uh, bids. Are we, are we not in compliance? Are we, are we not consistent? Please note that, that that policy is a city ordinance approved by the council, council members elected by the city, and it's very consistent with city governance and it's not um, an arbitrary number, it's not an arbitrary process. Uh, rather, a lot of the blockage of projects that have been proposed by individuals and by uh, city members have been blocked arbitrarily. Uh, this was not an arbitrary element. Okay, let's, let's talk about the proposal that we have in front of us. Within the pavement 
process, at the very end of the discussion when the approvals were made, parking areas were added to the uh, to the uh, approved Greenhorn Creek paving process. And I just uh, have never heard that uh, described clearly as far as how far that parking process um, extends, whether it goes to um, the driveway and, and parking areas at, the, at, uh, at camps, whether it goes to private uh, parking areas. That's never defined. I wonder if that has been fixed. Before we get off this, I'll the process has not been followed, so you're incorrect with your statement. I just want to make sure that you're you, you're completely aware of what I'm talking about. So I'll do some more homework. I, I'd appreciate you doing that. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, the, the the question about parking areas in Greenhorn Creek, uh, they, 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 these are contiguous uh, parking areas. I don't know what is the term. Uh, uh, embayments. The parking strips of the way the parking strips are part of the wall of 